Good day everyone, I am Micaela Billiones and for today's video, I'll be discussing about the different immune response of the human body against infection. The immune system is the body's defense against infections. The immune system attacks germs and helps keep us healthy. But how does the immune system work? When the body senses foreign substances, the immune system works to recognize the antigens and get rid of them. Humans have three types of immunity. The innate immunity. Everyone is born with innate immunity, a general type of for protection. For example, the skin acts as a barrier to black germs from entering the body. And the immune system recognizes when certain invaders are foreign and could be dangerous. Passive immunity. Immunity that is obtained from outside source. Example, antibiotic and clostrum. Active immunity, immunity that is obtained from the immune system actively. Defending the body. Example, ex vaccines, immune after having a disease. A first line, non-specific line of defense, barriers. Second, non-specific line of defense, inflammatory response or general attack. Lastly, a third specific line of defense is a defense compromising primary immune response and secondary immune response. Pathogen is a, any agent that causes us trouble. Non-specific defenses are the body's first line against disease. They are not directed against a particular pathogen. They guard against all infections regardless of their cause. Specific defenses are attempts by the body to defend itself against particular pathogens. Since pathogens must enter the body in order to cause disease, the body's first line of defense is to keep pathogens out. So what organ is used for this? The body's most important non-specific defense is skin. Unbroken skin provides a continuous layer that protects almost the body. Very few pathogens can penetrate the layers of dead cells at the skin surface. Oil and sweat glands at the surface of the skin produce a salty and acidic environment that kills many bacteria and other microorganisms. The importance of the skin as a barrier against infections becomes obvious when a small portion of skin is broken or scrapped off. Infection almost always follows. Infections are a result of the penetration of this broken skin by microorganisms, normally present on the unbroken skin. Pathogens also enter the body through the mouth and nose, but the body has non-specific defenses that protect these openings. Mucous membranes are tissues that protect the interior surfaces of the body that may expose to pathogens. They serve as a barrier and secret mucus, a sticky fluid that traps pathogens. Mucus, cilia, and hairs in the nose and throat trap viruses and bacteria. Pathogens that make it to the stomach are destroyed by stomach acid and digestive enzymes. Many secretions of the body, including mucus, saliva, sweat, and tears, contain lysosome an enzyme that breaks down the cell of many bacteria. The second line of defense, when pathogens get past skin and mucous membranes and enter the body, this second line of defense comes into play, triggered by injury to tissues in the body. The injured cells release a protein called histamine which starts a, a series of changes called the inflammatory response. This is an inflammatory response. It's a body second line of defense against invasion by pathogens. The inflammatory response is a nonspecific defense reaction of the body to tissue damage. Histamine increases blood flow to the injured area and increases the permeability of the surrounding capillaries. As a result, fluid and white blood cells leak from blood vessels into nearby tissue. Pathogens are attacked by 
phagocytes, which are white blood cells that engulf and destroy pathogens. The most common phagocyte, 50 to 70 percent of the white blood cells in the body is the neutrophil. Neutrophils circulate freely through blood cell vessels and they can squeeze between cells in the walls of a capillary to reach the site of infection. They then engulf and destroy any pathogens they encounter. Another type of phagocyte is the macrophage. They consume and destroy any pathogens they encounter. They also get rid of the body of worn out cells and cellular debris. Some macrophages are stationed in the tissues of the body, waiting pathogens while others move through the tissues and seek out of pathogens. Natural killer cells are large white blood cells that, unlike phagocytes, attack cells that have been infected by pathogens, not the pathogen themselves. They are particularly effective in killing cancer cells and cells infected with viruses. A natural killer cell punctures the cell membrane of its target cell and allowing water to rush into the cell, causing the cell to burst. But if all that is not enough, if a pathogen is able to get past the body's non-specific defenses, the immune system reacts with a series of specific defenses to attack the disease-causing agent. This is called the immune response. A substance that triggers the specific defenses of the immune system is known as an antigen. An antigen is a substance that a macrophage or white blood cell identifies as not belonging to the body. The immune response involves several organs as well as white blood cells in the blood and lymph. These include the bone marrow, thymus, lymph nodes, tonsils, adenoids, and spleen. Each organ of the immune system plays a different role in defending the body against pathogens. Bone marrow manufactures the billions of white blood cells needed by the body every day. Some newly produced WBC remain in the bone marrow to mature and specialize while others travel to the thymus to mature. Lymph nodes filter fat pathogens from the lymph and expose them to white blood cells. The spleen, a first size organ located with the stomach, filters pathogens from the blood. It is stuck with WBC that respond to the trapped pathogens. Lymphocytes, the white blood cells of the immune system are known as lymphocytes. The WBC are also found in the spleen and blood. Lymphocytes are WBCs that activate the immune response. There are two main types of lymphocytes, B cells and T cells. B lymphocytes or B cells which are produced and matured in the bone marrow are responsible for producing antibodies. Antibodies are special proteins that can bind to the antigen to the surface of a pathogen and help destroy it. Self or non-self distinction in order to respond to pathogens but to avoid responding to and destroying cells from its own body, a lymphocyte, must be able to recognize a pathogen as a foreign invader and distinguish it from cells of the body the last line of defense the general idea is this something that has go through the first lines of defense and enter the body in force if the body has been invaded by this particular nasty thing before the special lymphocytes called b cells and t cells are able to recognize these specific pathogens and overwhelm them if this is the new invasion, then the B-cells will learn how to fight this invader. Specification Antigen Recognition The nasty thing, B-cell or T-cell, and the B-cell or T-cell, this, this one is doesn't, and the B-cell or T-cell, this lymphocyte recognizes the red pathogen. Generating variety. The receptor molecule is a protein encoded by a highly variable gene. There is essentially a combinatorial library of parts in the genome. 
each of these, end of these, and end of these, and etc. The result is that an enormous variety of possible surface receptors called could be chosen. This is effectively a method for generating random receptors. Since recognition need not to be exact, it is possible in practice for a B or T cell to generate a receptor which matches any given antigen. In addition, B cells also undergo somatic hypermutation. Somatic just means in the body, during one's lifetime, hyper just means a lot. In a nutshell, through somatic hypermutation, a B cell recognizes an antigen that has not come in contact with before. Then this leads to the B cell dividing, creating daughters who produce the same receptor. But these daughter cells may have mutations in their library, which will allow some of the daughters may recognize the antigen even better. The summary of this demo a pathogen comes along if it gets through the barriers non-specifically lymphocyte kills it as a part of the inflammation response in an interaction to injury if it gets past that then the immune response come into play as follows if we've seen this before there are antibodies in the blood these antibodies disable and or tag the invader. The tagging attracts killer cells to make sure it is destroyed. If we haven't seen this before, B cells and T cells are floating around with a great variety of surface receptors. One of these will at least recognize it a bit. Clonal expansion then happens and with the gene variability and somatic hypermutation, we eventually get some B or T cells which are capable of recognizing it. The associated antibodies then disable and tag the invaders. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.